morning. We, our church conference is coming up on Sunday, October 24th. We will meet here with the church at 2 p.m. and there will be a staff parish meeting at 1.30. The scripture reading is from the book of Genesis, chapter 27, verses 1 through 4 and 15 through 23. In chapter 28, verses 10 through 17. When Isaac was old and his eyes were dim so that he could not see, he called his elder son Esau and said to him, My son. And he answered, Here I am. He said, See, I am old. I do not know the day of my death. Now then, take your weapons, your quiver and your bow, and go out to the field and hunt game for me. Then prepare for me savory food such as I like, and bring it to me to eat, so that I may bless you before I die. Then Rebekah took the best garments of her elder son Esau, which were with her in the house, and put them on her younger son Jacob. And she put the skins of the kids on his hands and on the smooth part of his neck. Then she handed the savory food and the bread that she had prepared to her son Jacob. So he went into his father and said, my father. And he said, here I am. Who are you, my son? Jacob said to his father, I am Esau, your firstborn. I have done as you told me. Now sit up and eat of my game so that you may bless me. But Isaac said to his son, How is it that you have found it so quickly, my son? He answered, because the Lord your God granted me success. Then Isaac said to Jacob, come near that I may feel you, my son, to know whether you are really my son Esau or not. So Jacob went up to his father Isaac, who felt him and said, the voice is Jacob's voice, but the hands are Esau's. He did not recognize him because his hands were hairy like his brother Esau's hands. So he blessed him. Jacob left Beersheba and went toward Haran. He came to a certain place and stayed there for the night because the sun had set. Taking one of the stones of the place, he put it under his head and lay down in that place. And he dreamed that there was a ladder set up on the earth the top of it reaching to heaven. And the angels of God were ascending and descending on it. And the Lord stood beside him and said, I am the Lord, the God of Abraham, your father, and the God of Isaac. The land on which you lie, I will give to you and to your offspring. And your offspring shall be like the dust of the earth. And you shall spread abroad to the west and to the east and to the north and to the south. And all the families of the earth shall be blessed in you and in your offspring. Know that I am with you and will keep you wherever you go and will bring you back to this land where I will not leave you until I have done what I have promised you. Then Jacob woke from his sleep and said, surely the Lord is in this place and I did not know it. And he was afraid and said, how awesome is this place? It is none other than the house of God, and this is the gate of heaven. May we be blessed by our hearing and understanding of the word this morning.
Will you pray with me? Dear Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. This is another one of those stories in the Bible that just make me wonder what God might be thinking. Here we have Jacob, the trickster, doing mean and selfish things for his own gain. There are several stories about how Jacob is able to trick people for his own benefit. Now here with the help of his mother, Rebecca, Jacob is able to trick his father, Isaac, into giving him the blessing that was meant for his older brother, Esau. And despite this, Jacob is also able to receive God's blessing, a reaffirmation of the promises that God made to his grandfather, Abraham, of land and descendants that will bless the whole world. Now, don't get to feeling too bad for Esau. He was blessed with wealth, long life, and many children. So it's not like he missed out on much when he didn't receive his father's or God's blessing. He had a pretty good life. And later on, he was able to reconcile with Jacob. But it kind of makes me wonder why God would extend the promises to Abraham through his younger grandson, Jacob especially since family inheritance traditionally went through the eldest son and not the youngest, especially when the youngest was kind of a jerk like Jacob. But we see this happen time and again in the Bible. Technically, Isaac was the younger son of Abraham as Ishmael was born first. And we will See it again with Jacob's or Israel's youngest son, Joseph. But when we read this story, Jacob does not seem to deserve his father's blessing, let alone God's. But then again, we all know from personal experience that life does not always go like we expect. And God is able to make do with less than the best. For example, a stable in Bethlehem. Notice also that at this point, Jacob was on the lamb, running away from the wrath of his brother Esau when he stopped to sleep because the sun had set. It was just a random place. It was as good as any other to spend the night, and so he did. We are told the place was especially beautiful or that it was hallowed ground. It was just an ordinary place that he happened to stop to sleep. Yet it was there that Jacob encountered God. In a dream, Jacob saw the angels of God ascending and descending upon the earth. And then God was right there beside him. And God repeated the promises to Jacob that had been made to Abraham. He told him, I am the Lord, the God of Abraham, your father, and the God of Isaac. The land on which you lie, I will give to you and your offspring and your offspring shall be like the dust of the earth. And you shall spread abroad to the west and to the east and to the north and to the south. And all the families of the earth shall be blessed in you and in your offspring. Know that I am with you and will keep you wherever you go 
and I will bring you back to this land, for I will not leave you until I have done as I have promised you. Notice that while the promise is made first to Abraham and then to Jacob, it is a plan to bless all the families of the earth. And just because Jacob happens to be the chosen one, it did not mean that Jacob or Israel's life would be easy. He would be tricked into marrying a woman that he did not love before having to work to earn and marry the woman that he wanted. His descendants would escape famine by going to Egypt, only to become enslaved there. And then later liberated to wander 40 years in the wilderness. And then finally to be delivered to the promised land. In the promised land, they would see a long series of wars before being conquered and taken away into captivity again. And then they would return to struggle along, waiting for the coming of the Messiah, who would not meet their expectations either. So sometimes being a chosen one is not all that we think that it might be. So maybe God is a bit of a trickster too. But then we see throughout the Bible that God is true to God's promises, extending grace where it doesn't seem to be deserved. Reverend King Duncan tells of the tradition simply known as the secret Santa in Kansas City. Every Christmas, the secret Santa seeks out people who are down and out, and he quietly slips them an envelope with a crisp hundred dollar bill inside. Recipients are usually astounded at this unmerited act of generosity. Well, a few years ago, someone tracked down this secret Santa <clears throat> and asked him why he does this. And the man replied that life has blessed him with an extremely successful business venture. But that was not always the case. Early on, he was a down and out salesman who was reduced to living out of his car. One morning when he hadn't eaten for two days, he was incredibly hungry. So hungry that he walked into a diner in Houston, Mississippi to order breakfast with no intention of paying for it. He couldn't pay. He had no money, but he was just so hungry. So as he hungrily ate his breakfast, he wondered how he was going to be able to pay for this meal, or more likely how he was able to get out of paying for this meal. When the check came, he fumbled around in his pockets pretending to have lost his wallet but the owner of the diner had already sized him up. He knew he didn't have the money. So the owner came out from around behind the counter and approached the man and bent down as if to pick something up. The owner said to the man, well now, it looks like you've dropped this $20 bill. And he gave it to him. Now the man could pay for his breakfast and had a little bit more to keep for the road. He never forgot this totally undeserved act of generosity and goodness. So now he gives to others as someone once gave to him. This is essentially the story of the Bible. It's a story of creation. 
the story of Abraham and Israel, of Christmas and Easter. It's the story of God's blessing to all the families of the world, chosen or not, deserving or not. And it is lucky for us that this is the case because we do not get what we deserve. We get what God wants to give us. Good gifts that we could never earn. A beautiful world in which to live. A savior willing to sacrifice himself for a sinful world and an unworthy people on this fallen world. God is everywhere in the world. We may go to places where we hope to get closer to God, like church, but God is always with us wherever we go. Just as God was in the nondescript place where Jacob left, laid his head for the night. God is with us. Like God was with Jacob, telling him, know that I am with you and will keep you wherever you go. I will not leave you until I have done what I have promised you. Wherever we go, God has gone before us. And whatever we do, God is willing to accept grace and acceptance. All we have to do is accept it. It's a gift offered in love for all of God's creation. May we look on God's good creation through the eyes of God, to see the good even in the undeserving and extend grace to those who need it, deserving or not. This is what God does for us. How can we do any less? Thanks be to God for God's undeserved grace and mercy. Amen. Now let us join together in the affirmation of faith. We are not alone. We live in God's world. We believe in God who has created and is creating, who has come in Jesus the word made flesh, to reconcile and make new, who works in us and others by the Spirit. We trust in God. We are called to be the church, to celebrate God's presence, to love and serve others, to seek justice and resist evil, to proclaim Jesus crucified and risen, our judge and our hope, In life, in death, in life beyond death, God is with us. We are not alone. Thanks be to God. Amen. And now we come together in our time of prayer. Does anyone have joys or concerns that they would lift up this morning? Lord, through Abraham, Jacob, and the people of Israel, you have sought to bless the whole world. You make us to know about your love and to develop your blessed community here on the earth. Lord, help us to see others through your eyes, to See them as your blessed and beloved children, that we may reach out to them in love and acceptance 
and patience for whatever situation they may be going through. Lord, help us to represent you to your people here on earth, to be there in the places of disaster and violence and famine and whatever hardship your people here on earth are facing. We give you thanks for those who have made it their life's work to alleviate suffering of any kind wherever they find it in this world. Or we give you thanks for your Messiah, your Son, Christ Jesus, who lived among us as our example of how to live in the world, whose prayer together we now recite, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And now we come into our time of the offering. In September and October, we will be collecting for Ridge Communities, who help to provide free transitional housing to 131 homeless DuPage County families each year. During this time, they are able to save money, learn budgeting skills, and obtain better employment so they can live self-sufficiently once they graduate. I thank those who continue to mail in their offerings or text to give at the number that's on your screen. Now let us dedicate our offering. Lord, you walk with us daily, providing for our needs. Receive these gifts in recognition and praise for the many blessings you provide for us. Amen. Now let us join together in hymn 577, God of grace and God of glory, verses 1, 3, and 4. Thank you. 
May we take the grace and wisdom of God and go out in the world in courage to meet the trials of each day anew and to extend God's grace and mercy to a hurting world. And may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you and give you peace. Amen.